Hi there. Very good day to everyone. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today, as usual, on Sunday uh, on BDIC. And Mr. Saka, today, our uh, special guest all the way down from Bedfordshire, UK. Uh, barrister, practicing barrister, LLM University of Bedfordshire, LLB University of Bedfordshire, one of my good friends. Uh, and thank you very much, Mr. Saka, today for taking your valuable time from the UK on a weekend family day. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Now, it's over to you. Uh, you can uh, start your session, please. Welcome, uh, everyone, um, uh, people from different parts of the world, uh, maybe subcontinent, including Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, United Kingdom, Europe, Africa. All on board. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, some of you may have different times. It, it, it might be your bedtime. Uh, and thanks for your patience and joining us today. So what I would do, I'm going to explain to you uh, how you can become a solicitor or a barrister in the United Kingdom. Okay, the world is not small. So... Apart from being a solicitor or a barrister, there are other routes you can become a lawyer in the United Kingdom. Okay, I will come to that point later of my speech. So let's start with becoming a solicitor. Okay, so uh, to qualify as a solicitor, you can see on the screen, uh, Mr. Ahmed has posted so you must have a qualifying law degree, which is recognized by the uh, solicitor's regulated authority, solicitor's regulation authority in England and Wales. So uh, do, what does it mean by qualifying law degree? Of course, you need to study certain subjects uh, over a uh, three years time limit. And then once you finish your law degree, uh, this is known as qualifying law degree or QLD. And then you choose to become either a solicitor or a barrister. So there are two different routes. And if you have any questions, you can ask me later. Uh, so let's come to the point solicitor. So if you have not enrolled your course yet, or you have enrolled, or some of you might have completed your course, or some of you might be qualified lawyer in other jurisdictions apart from England and Wales. So what would you do to qualify as, a, uh, English, uh, as an English solicitor? So now there are different criteria. Now, if you have a foreign degree, there is one criteria. If you have English law degree, th there are certain rules you need to follow. If you're a qualified lawyer already practicing in other jurisdiction and you intend to become a solicitor in England and Wales, then you have to follow uh, a certain procedure. So now you finish your law degree over the three years, then you need to sit for the SQE test. So uh, SQE test, there are two levels, two uh, uh, stages of exams. Uh, uh, okay, you can see on the screen. So this uh, solicitor qualifying exam or SQE is uh, stage one and stage two. So uh, you can sit for those exams if you have qualifying law degree. And then once you finish level one, you can sit for level two. Once you finish level one and level two, then you need to show you have competency. I mean, you need two years of legal practicing experience. That means you have to be under supervision of a solicitor or a practicing lawyer. So after two years, you can become a qualified solicitor. 
So now, what would they do? SQE or LBC? That might be one of your questions. So if you have received your offer letter before the 31st of August, 2000, sorry, 2021. So this is 2023. So if you have received your acceptance before the 31st of August, 2021, or you have started your law degree two years before, means on the in September 2021, you can choose either seat for SQE or doing LPC. If you have not started your course, within this date and you have started your course after this date or you have received your letter of acceptance doing LLB or a qualified law degree after September 2021, then you have to sit for SQE. So I assume at the moment, if you have not done your law degree, and you intend to do your law degree, you have to do SQE to qualify as a solicitor. So now you need to do L LLB course, means three years of law degree, is undergraduate degree. So there are three uh, stages in each year. So first year you have to do certain subjects, which is level four, I think. And then in your second year, level five, and then in your third year, level four. So there are compulsory subjects you must finish before you are going to be awarded your LLB or a qualified law degree. So if Okay, if uh, Mr. Ahmed, you think uh, I'm out of the track, please uh, feel free to interrupt. So now once you finish your three degree, three years of law degree, you can decide to qualify as a solicitor or as a barrister. So now if you want to uh, become a barrister in England and Wales, then you have to do BTC, previously known as BPTC or BVC. So BTC is a one-year course, one-year training, professional training. Uh, it's mainly advocacy training provided by uh, about eight institutions in England and Wales. So once you finish your law degree, you do your BTC bar training course, one year. And then once you finish your one year training, you have to do your PPLH in a chamber, a set of chamber with bars. So each, so there are two stages of PPLH. First six months, your, uh, is called uh, first six and second six, means the second six months. So you need to finish your 12 months of pupillage. Once you finish your 12 months pupillage, then you have to secure your tenancy, means you join a chamber and then start practicing as a barrister. So this is if you want to decide, if you decide to become a barrister in England and Wales. So now uh, I'm going to pass the uh, mic over to Mr. Ahmed, unless uh, you have any questions. And I will, of course, uh, uh, take any questions you might have, uh, especially prospective students, or you might have finished your law degree or uh, professional training such as LPC or BP, BTC or BPTC. 
or you might be a practicing lawyer in other jurisdictions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me, come on the mic and then ask me if you have any uh, questions, please. Audience, if you have any questions, you can please go ahead and then we can proceed to the next uh, step, next uh, topic of it. Please, that's your time. <clears throat> Right, now let me uh, add a couple of points to uh, what Mr. Saka said. Uh, <clears throat> if you have, he has given the timelines for uh, 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 to go through this <clears throat> LPZ route, legal practice course route. If you have already qualified with a law degree or if you are still practicing in some of the different jurisdictions in your country, uh, you have an option to still go through uh, uh, qualifying, uh, I'm sorry, the <clears throat> legal practice course uh, because you now, as far as I understand, doing legal practice course, which is uh, comparatively easier than the SQE exams rules, uh, I understand that. So anyway, if you have completed your law degree, you have that option still open until 23rd, I think. Uh, now, if you don't have that one, if you are still studying or uh, you have an intention to study a law degree, then that option is closed for you. So you have to go through these LP0 where... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, where uh, you have to write these exams, uh, the SQV1 and SQV2. SQV1 exams can be done uh, in many parts of the world. Uh, you can do that in Bangladesh, in Sri Lanka, in India, in Pakistan, in uh, Dubai. There are uh, centers that you can run the exams uh, there. You can do the exams. There are two uh, parts there. And then you have three attempts each part. You have to uh, complete those things. And then after that, you can move to the second part of your SQV, which is uh, at the moment available only in the UK, you have to fly. Uh, but they have an, the solicitor authority has an idea to develop centers uh, uh, to other part of the countries as well. Okay, so now uh, in this low degree earlier, if you use that, uh, the, the, uh, S, the legal practice course, you have to have a qualifying law degree. You have to have uh, the degree. It is not only the uh, basic LLB. There is a difference in between these two, LLB honors degree and LLB honors degree qualifying degree. We call it uh, QLB, qualifying law degree. You have to have a qualifying law degree. But if you want to go through the solicitor exams, SQV1, SQV2, you don't even need to have a law degree. If you have a degree or a qualification at level six, you can do you need to have a degree, that's all. You don't need to have a law degree. If you have uh, a degree at level six, equal to a level six UK degree, you can do the exams. Right? You can uh, sit for those two exams. Uh, uh, one, the first exam in your country, uh, wherever that is available to you. And the second part, at the moment, you have to fly to the UK. Now, the next part is about, he was talking about this. Uh, if you have a degree in business, you can still write the exams, that's fine. But the question is, how are you going to manage your, your answers, your question paper uh, in your exam? So that it is strongly advised for you to do your degree in law, then you can uh, proceed to SQV 1 and 2. Now, when you take this law degree, there are so many options for you, maybe in your country or maybe in some other countries, or maybe a degree, a UK degree in your country. It is highly uh, available. Uh, meantime, that degree is available for you in your fingertips uh, online. You can do it from anywhere in the world. You can do it. And usually, this law degree has about six, maximum six subjects in your first year. And the second year, another six subjects. But uh, there are degrees, which is uh, four subjects in the first year. And then the second year, four subjects. After that, you can do your final year, third year. That, again, you will have four subjects plus plus a research, then you will complete your law degree. Then after that, you may go for this solicitor preparation <clears throat> course or the degree you do in a university final year, they have an additional training on that. They provide you the training to do your SQV exams one and two. So if you choose a good university to study, you can do your solicitor preparation in your final year. 
then you can go ahead with your exams, the first uh, SQV exams. Then you can travel to, uh, to the UK to do your second uh, exams uh, after that. Right, uh, what else I would say, right. So, yeah. Right, yes, Zarka, uh, if you have any other points to add to this, please. Right, I think there is a question on the chat section. Someone asked, uh, please tell about the Sri Lankan Atonia law without LLB yeah. degree. So, Mr. Ahmed, if you can explain. Uh, yes, now, <clears throat> hang on, let me. Yeah, there's a question. Please tell about the Sri Lankan attorney at law with, uh, without LLB degree. Uh, now, in this case, uh, now, Saka, this is the model. Uh, in Sri Lanka, if you have a degree, that is the academic part, and you have to do the attorney at law in the professional part, then you have to, then only you can practice as a lawyer in the courts. But that is uh, almost similar to the uh, legal practice course, LPC. After the degree, you have to do LPC to practice solicitor or as barrister. The same way in Sri Lanka, you have the first degree, uh, LLB honors degree. Then you have to do the uh, next SQV part instead of that. We do that LLB in Sri Lanka. So that is the option. But there's another option here. You don't need to do a degree. You can straight away do the professional part from the professional body. We call it law college in Sri Lanka. If you have that professional qualification, which is uh, uh, attorney at law, then you can go ahead with the practice. You can straight away practice in the course. You don't need to have a degree. So his question is, if you don't have a degree, but if you have the attorney at law, uh, which uh, allows me to practice in Sri Lanka, what is my case if I do, if I want to do SQV in the UK? That's the question. But I, I don't know. Can you please go ahead with that? He doesn't have a degree, but he has the professional qualification, which allows him to practice law in Sri Lanka. Can he write the SQV exams? That's the question. Okay. Okay, now if someone is practicing in Sri Lanka as a lawyer and then he intends to practice in England and as a lawyer, uh, as a solicitor, I would say, okay, so he needs to sit for the SQE. So, how he can, whether he can sit for the SQE, that's the question. So, SRA uh, requirement is that. If you are a foreign lawyer or a, a foreigner with a foreign law degree, or you have degrees in other field rather than a law degree, you can apply to assess your certificates or your qualification and experience by the SRA. Okay, so I, I can tell uh, there is a website. Uh, I can share the link, or uh, Mr. Ahmed, you can share the link. It's sra.org.uk slash become dash solicitor and qualified uh, uh, dash solicitors. So, uh, and you, you can do the Google search as well. So what I mean, so you go to the SRA website and then you have to, uh, uh, you know, send your details to SRA. So what SRA does, uh, they, check your qualification with a, a, a third party called Atlanta Data. So, so uh, sorry, it's Atlantic Data. So Atlantic Data, they assess your certificate. And you need to demonstrate that you have relevant experience or relevant qualifications, though you may not have a law degree and they will reply to your uh, queries within five working days. And there is a fees, uh, it's not uh, a lot of money, it's about, uh, I think, approximately 39 pound. Okay, so I don't know how much is it in Sri Lankan uh, currency. So then they will reply to you and they will tell you if your certificates uh, uh, allow you to sit for the SQE or not. And secondly, although you may have different degrees, different uh, qualifications, if you do not have knowledge of English law, English legal system, it is going to be very hard for you to pass the exams. So I would recommend you to at least do some other course, like you can do a graduate diploma in law, which runs for one year, 
uh, or you can do even uh, LLB uh, for certain subjects. Uh, I think Mr. Ahmed can recommend uh, as well. Uh, because, or there is a course, uh, LLM in SQE. Uh, so you can uh, do the LLM in SQE if you have undergraduate or postgraduate degree. Uh, so once you do LLM in SQE, you will have greater knowledge. You can straight sit for the uh, exams and pass the exams, and you can demonstrate that yes, you are qualified to sit for the exams because you have done your LLM masters in SQE which is provided by many institutions. Uh, so you can decide actually whether to do. Uh, uh, I think BT also provide SQE. Mr. Ahmed, am I right? Are you providing yeah. SQE now? Yes, we are, we are giving some trainings at the moment. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so uh, you, you can also do your LLM in SQE with BT and then uh, you can sit for the exams. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, should be much easier for you than uh, uh, not having the qualifications. So now some of you might decide to do uh, uh, BTC, bar professional training, uh, uh, rather than becoming a solicitor, you may think of becoming a barrister. So now let me uh, uh, clarify this matter, becoming a barrister. Why would you become a barrister? First thing, you want to be an advocate, okay? You want to represent your client uh, before the uh, English courts and tribunals. Now, to become a barrister, you need to do your bar training in, in England and Wales, all Wales. So now you have to have qualifying law degree to do a, a bar course. There is no exemptions, unless you are a qualified foreign lawyer, there is another route available to you. You can contact the uh, bar standard group and they will facilitate you. So now if you want to be a barrister, first thing you need to do the qualifying loading LLB for three years. And then you apply uh, to the uh, 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 university or college to do your BTC course. So once you pass this course, it's, it's training for one year. And once you pass it, you apply for pupillage. Once you finish your two sets of pupillage, each of them six months, yeah, <clears throat> in one of the chambers in England or Wales, then you can uh, become a practicing barrister. But the final stage is you have to be a tenant in a chamber or you can be a consultant uh, in a law firm, or you can be a government servant. If you have the uh, uh, work permit in England and Wales, or you're a British national, yes. So of course, this is different issues, whether you are authorized or you are allowed to work in England and Wales. So you may have to have uh, certain types of uh, permission or authorization to work in, in, uh, as a lawyer if you're a foreigner, unless you, you have certain types of visa, work permit, or uh, residency in the United Kingdom. Okay, Mr. Ahmed, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. I think you have answered the question. Anyway, let me uh, add a couple of points to that uh, to make sure that the answer is cleared uh, for the others as well. Now, uh, she, uh, let me read the, this one. The question was, she is having or he is having the <clears throat> attorney at law. She is a practicing lawyer and she wants to become a solicitor. So that in that case, uh, if you don't have a degree, standard applic application requirement is you should have a degree, any degree, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be uh, necessarily a qualifying law degree. Any degree, you can go for SKV one and two. Now, if you don't have a degree, Mr. Saka offered uh, or informed one thing, which is the uh, graduate diploma in law. It is equal to a degree. Uh, there's a short program, short course uh, that you can do from many universities uh, that is available still today, I think. But when they take this, uh, this option off to go through this LPC, they will close that as well. That is what I read recently. 
but anyway there's an option you can do that one then you can do your skv or else in your country why don't you go for a degree uh, because you have the law uh, qualification already you can go for a degree finally a straight away top up degree straight away then after that you can go for your exams it's easy or else he suggested another option which is the llm uh, skv the quali uh, uh, solicitor qualifying llm masters in law it is possible there are universities i heard one university which is ulo where you studied in saka yes <clears throat> you've done your papers in university of law okay yes? uh, mr ahmed sorry uh, uh, in relation to the question asked by one participant uh, uh, i think it's martin if i'm uh, correcting uh, her name uh, 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 is pronouncing her name properly her question is she is a student uh, in bristol uh, University of Bristol. And uh, her question is, um, she is a qualified lawyer in Sri Lanka. Okay. So if I answer to that question, now she has two options. Number one, she can do her GDL, graduate diploma in law, and then she can uh, do BTC course. Yes. Is, is going to be easy for her. Secondly, she can contact the bar standard group and she can tell them that I'm a qualified lawyer in Sri Lanka and this is my position. So, uh, so what would they do? She needs to be a member of one of the four inns uh, if she's listening to me. So, uh, so there are four inns in England one is uh, Honorable Society of Lincoln's Inn, uh, then Gray's Inn, Middle Temple, and Inner Temple. So first thing, she needs to be a, a member of one of the four inns. And uh, she is qualified to become a member. And then once she becomes the member, and she can let BSB, Bar Standard Board, know that this is, uh, uh, these are the following qualification and experience she has in Sri Lanka. So then they can, it is their discretion whether to give her any exemption uh, 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 rather than doing a BTC course. I don't think she needs to do BTC course. She can uh, do uh, another uh, form of excerpts to qualify as a barrister. So, uh, 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 Mithini, if you feel free, you can come to the mic. And uh, if you're not clear, you can ask me if you have further questions. Thank you very much. And uh, Saka, there's another question. Is BTC compulsory for one who has a qualifying law degree and is practicing as an attorney at law in Sri Lanka? She already has uh, the qualifying law. Yeah. Well, if someone is practicing in Sri Lanka, yes, is a practicing lawyer in Sri Lanka, does yeah. not have to have a, 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 B, a BTC course. Yes, so they have another form of course because she is a practicing lawyer in Sri Lanka. So she can uh, do that course. I mean, the, as a practicing lawyer, uh, it's a short form of course. And she can become a barrister in England and Wales. Or she can choose to do a GDL and then uh, uh, do a BTC course. So both routes are open for her. Okay. And there's another question. Shall we do solicitor exams from Sri Lanka? Uh, yeah. Solicitor exams, let me take that question. Uh, there are two parts. Solicitor exam, SQV1 and SQV2. SQV1, it has two uh, exams. SQV1, uh, first part and the second part. Those two, you can do it in Sri Lanka. There is an option, there is a center, which is in, uh, I think, Kalkisa. Okay, so we can help you uh, to find that place out. Uh, and the second part, you have to go to the UK at the moment, but uh, they have announced that they may uh, develop centers around. And okay, Saka, there's now, a question. Can you please answer? What is the name of... Yeah, yes, please. What is the name of that course? How, uh, okay. how, yeah, 
practice like how many years of practice. Okay, let me answer Razi's questions already been answered uh, when uh, Martini asked the similar questions. Uh, so uh, Razi is a qualified lawyer in Sri Lanka. So his question mm -hmm. is, does he need to do BTC course? Uh, if you are practicing, you need to do a another form of course, which is provided by Bar Standard Group. So you don't have to do your BTC course, but you can do BTC course as well, but you have to do GDL course or a qualifying law degree course if you decide to follow the other routes. And so there, for the qualified uh, lawyers, uh, two different routes open to you. Okay, hope that answers uh, your uh, query. And yes, what was the next question? Uh, how to become a member of one of uh, those four inns? I think you are, okay. you are the member of the Lincoln Inn. So can okay. you tell her so, the story? Uh, okay, Me, uh, Martin, yes. Right. So you need to uh, go to the website of uh, Lincoln's Inn or Gray's Inn, uh, uh, or you, uh, you can choose Middle Temple or, or Inner Temple. I'm a member of Lincoln's Inn. So I can tell you about Lincoln's Inn. You have to uh, send your details of certificate your uh, and then one more thing you need is a character certificate so you need two person who can verify your character and they have a format where you can actually uh, ask someone to uh, give you character reference you can have it either uh, from someone who's a qualified lawyer in england who knows you for years or you can have it from your high commission based in london or from someone from Sri Lanka as well, and they can certify your character. Uh, uh, okay, I believe she has a good character because she is from Sri Lanka. Uh, so uh, these are the criteria, it's not really hard. And then there is a small fee uh, for the uh, student members. So after you become a member, and then another criteria, you have to sit for 12 qualifying dinners. So means there are a dining. You have to dine with the uh, uh, judges and uh, the senior barristers. So what do you mean by uh, these dinings? I'm going to explain to you a little bit more because you may heard that barristers, they uh, eat and dine with the judges and, and uh, the, uh, also the senior barristers. QC, Queen's Council. Uh, so what you do, once you become a member, you sit for 12 dinners. Means you go there, have your food, you, you discuss with the other members of the bar. And then sometime you participate in advocacy training uh, provided by the inns. Your inn provide that training. So you become student member and then you attend 12 qualifying sessions. And these 12 qualifying sessions is a part of your uh, uh, bar training as well. So once you finish this 12 qualifying session and you pass your uh, BPTC course, or you pass your qualifying lawyers training course from uh, provided by BSB or a institute like BPT, uh, sorry, uh, BPP or other uh, University of Law or other institute, then they will invite you for an interview. Um, so uh, if uh, Sanjivya, Sanjivya, I think uh, your questions, if you listen to my uh, talk, yeah, that might be uh, answering your questions as well. So once you finish this 12 uh, qualifying session, and then you pass your uh, BTC course, or you pass your qualifying lawyers uh, uh, training course, then uh, you will be called to the bar. Means your in will invite you to attend a call day. So the day you get called, you become barrister. So once you become barrister, you need to contact the uh, chamber where you will be uh, sitting uh, as a uh, people barrister. And you have to stay in the chamber for 
one year, two sixes. Once you finish them, you submit this training uh, to the BSB, and then you become a qualified lawyer. And then, of course, you need to secure a tenancy. You need to practice in a set of uh, chamber. Okay. So hope that answers your questions, unless you have any further questions. Mr. Ahmed, I can see there are a number of questions on the screen. Um, let yeah, me see. Let me read that. Yeah, uh, there's a question, where is the location in Sri Lanka to do the solicitor exams? It is in uh, Galki, sir, or we call it formerly Mount Lavinia. Uh, that was the latest update that I saw. Uh, anyway, we can have an update on that later. So you can go to Google, uh, go to solicitor website. You can find the location where they operate in Sri Lanka. The next question is, uh, sir, I'm a LLB graduate and banking degree holder, and currently I'm in the UK. Please update me how to proceed my uh, dream to become a barrister. She is having, or she or he is having a law degree and a banking degree as well. I don't think she's having any professional qualification as of uh, attorney at law or other part. So she only has a degree. So what's the route to become a barrister? Okay, so if you are doing English, Gold degree means QL. I, I assume that he or she is doing a LLB uh, uh, or a, a qualified uh, qualifying law degree. Okay, once no. you... both the degrees yes. are in Sri Lanka from Sri Lanka. Okay, so Sri Lanka? English degree or Sri Lankan degree? Yes, but currently I'm located in UK. So when I ask uh, to some other um, like known persons, they advise me. Uh, so since you have two uh, or three Sri Lankan degrees here, you have to do some conversion course of EGDL. So I'm a bit cut to I'm waiting to some get advices from you. So that's what, sir. Okay, thank you. I understood your questions. So let me repeat. If not, you can come to the mic again. So, okay, so if you're, uh, if you have a law degree, Sri Lankan law degree, you can do GDL, Graduate uh, Diploma uh, in Law. So GDL is provided by many institutions in England. Okay. So uh, this is one year course for uh, full-time students who are, I assume, foreign student. Or uh, you can do two-year part-time if you are if you are allowed to do certain cases, maybe you are, you have work I mean, permit. Or is, yeah, visa. Yeah, so I assume you are an international student. So in your case, you have to do one year full-time uh, GDL. So once, but you have to finish uh, a UK degree before you can do your GDL. Because Sri Lankan law degree will not allow you to sit for GDL. So what you need to do, you have to have a, an English law degree or a English master's degree. So what you do, you can finish your Sri Lankan degree and then you can do LLM, master, uh, master's in, in English university. And then you do your GDL. But you cannot do your GDL after you finish your Sri Lankan law degree. That's not going to be allowed. So once you finish your GDL after doing a master's course in England or a qualifying law degree, uh, because if you have qualifying law degree, the advantage is you don't need to do GDL. You do your qualifying law degree, you straight go to the bar. They do BPTC. But if you have master's in other field or any field, even LLM, then you have to do GDL. So I hope you understood the uh, situation. Uh, uh, you can come to the mic if you want to have more clarification. In yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, great. Okay, next question. Yeah. Uh... <coughs> Excuse me. Right, I'm following LLB uh, degree from London from a campus in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. what would be the path for me to become a barrister? So the first okay, I question I- That was yeah, hard, please. that was hard, already been answered. All right, okay. And then, right, uh, hi, are there STV classes in Sri Lanka? Uh, we are providing, and we are actually uh, on the process to provide that. However, there are so many options for you from the UK.
can learn it from Sri Lanka. There are so many options and uh, you can find those things out. There are options, multiple options. Right, any other questions, please? Right. So okay. Uh, uh, give me a moment. Uh, uh, someone sir. asked if you can share the link. Uh, uh, Mr. Me? Ahmed, if you're not able to uh, share this uh, link, I I may try uh, to share the link. Yeah. Okay. Which link that is about, Saka? I think on the chat section they say um, uh, becoming a member. So I don't know whether. Uh, uh, becoming a member of uh, link uh, the one of the forums or becoming a member of SRA. So uh, it can you can come to the mic and you can ask me these questions on the mic. Yes. Whether then, the... Yeah, and then one more point that uh, the link that you're looking for, if you want, we can provide it later. Uh, there's a number on the flyer we shared. Can you please send a WhatsApp to that and we'll relax to send that link to you. Is that okay? Yeah, so it might be, yeah, yes. it might be the question of links about becoming a uh, member of um, one of the four rings. So I have explained yes. uh, again, you need to contact the one of the four rings. Yeah, we can, can share can... the link. Can you... Yeah, we can share the link. Can you please send us a WhatsApp so that it's easy for us to share the link. And there's yeah. a question from Nab Nabzal. That was a, that was a very easy, is, is, is it there? Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I'm on the line. I'm, I'm on the link. All of this talk by the uh, Sarka. So uh, he has talked about these uh, members, member system. Okay. Right. Yes. So you Sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah, the, 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 your, your, your voice is not clear. Your, your, sorry, your, sir. Your, uh, there is, there is an interruption. Your link. Yes. So if you can, uh, if you can write your questions on the screen, please. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll do it. Okay. I can hear you now. Can you can you tell me the questions again? Yeah. In a, in a in a couple of minutes a couple of minutes ago you talk about uh, to become a membership of that uh, four forums right and uh, you you talk about the this one the link to uh, get registered in the members so I couldn't get your link properly that is what I'm asking again okay, to so share. do you mean do you mean uh, uh, the becoming member of one of the four rings? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So you want to become a barrister in England and Wales? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Listen again. So there are four ins. If you can uh, listen to me uh, or if you can write it down. One I think is, Saka, he, needs, he needs a link of those uh, all four oh, ins. Oh, okay. So, so, so we can well, share the link. Can you please send a WhatsApp message to us? Okay. So if you now. send the message yes. at, 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 in the WhatsApp we'll, we'll and then we'll share the link. You will share the links of four years, so you can choose. So I have, I, I have a Dr. Hazi's number, so I'll okay, personally, yeah, I'll, uh, yes, definitely. Up and uh, answer one please. more question. And your voice is again breaking. The voice is again breaking. We can't hear you. If the, in the UK and how much yeah, now can is it okay? It's better yeah, now. It's yes. better now. Okay. So I'm a lawyer. I'm a practicing lawyer and having a LLB degree in Okay. Again, if you can, if you can listen to me. Uh, if you can listen to me, sir. Uh, if you are a practicing uh, lawyer in other can you hear me? Also in Sri Lanka. 
been uh, MBA, Master of Business Administration. Yeah, uh, your line went in, uh, not clear. We yeah. can hear you. Yes. Yeah. No, no, it's still echoing, I think. Hello? Yeah, okay. It's better. Hello? Okay, what would you do if you can send your questions because your mic is not clear, your voice is not clear? Uh, uh, it, if you can send a message to is Mr. Ahmed, it, is it he is still right not right clear. Now. We we cannot understand, understand. your question. So if you can right, send, I will come back. To you. I will. Uh, yeah, please. if you can send a message. And there is a question, Mr. Ahmed. Yeah. From I am present. Yeah, I am presently following my LLM at University of Dundee. Is the is it the same procedure to become a solicitor in Scotland? Well. Uh, then he needs to contact the Scottish bar because I'm not qualified in Scotland, unfortunately, because he is in Dundee. So Dundee is within the different jurisdiction. Though it's in the yes, United I mean, Kingdom, Scottish law. Uh, Scotland is a different jurisdiction than us. So he needs to contact the Scottish bar. And I think there is a similar training they provide. Yes. So, um, he needs to uh, speak to the uh, Scottish uh, 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 Bar Council, okay? And there is a question, a similar question by Zainab. Uh, Zainab, uh, I believe you are doing or you have finished your uh, UK qualifying law degree. So even if you have not finished, you still can become a member of one of the four inns. So to become a member of one of the four ins, you do not have to finish your law degree. You still can become a member without even finishing your law degree. Because becoming a, a, becoming a member of one of the four ins doesn't mean you are a qualified lawyer or you can practice. Once you become a member, you need to finish your uh, uh, professional training as well as 12 qualifying dinner. So once you finish everything, then you can apply for DPH. Hope that answer your questions. Or oh, Jainab, you are welcome to come to the mic if you have any other questions. Yeah. Um, any so other questions? Right yeah. So right after getting an undergrad law degree, which um, you know, is based off the UK. Um, do I need to have any uh, work experience right before, um, you know, starting the official um, dinners at the inn, as you may say? Okay, Zainab. So you do not need to have experience in order to be a member of one of the four inns, okay? You do not need to be uh, a... a, a a, a graduate or you do not have to be a qualified lawyer anyone can become a member of one of the four ins. now the second stage there are questions whether you will get the pupillage so this is uh, or you can do your btc course so the provider of btc course or the chambers they want you must have some sort of legal experience, not only your education. What I recommend, there is something called mini pupillage, if you have heart. So mini pupillage means you stay in a set of chambers with barristers, practicing barristers, for three to five days, and you go to the courts, or you sit in the chamber doing research or help the barristers, doing their work and this is called mini pupillage that means you are like in elementary stage or you are in a learning period like apprentice uh, in a set of chambers so you do uh, you do see the uh, work the barristers do day uh, to day from nine to five or even they're doing their research how how do they do their practical like Give, giving opinion to the other solicitors or advising solicitors or their potential client because the barristers, most barristers, they are not allowed to uh, 
give direct advice to the lay client unless they have like public access training. Uh, what I mean, the barristers, they advise the solicitors. Okay, so the solicitors, a client come to the solicitor, give the instruction to the solicitors and the solicitors, what they want, a legal expert opinion from a barrister. So the solicitors give me the case and I do study the case and I, I express my opinion to the solicitors. If the solicitors say, okay, you need to represent my client before the tribunal or the courts, then I yeah. take the case to the, the tribunal and then I can sit with the client only at that point before the hearing in a conference. So you will be doing conference as well as uh, uh, with along with your training uh, uh, to the uh, BTC training. So I sit with the client, do the conference. I take the I go through the client's witness statement. I clarify certain matters with the client, and then I take the client along with my solicitors sometimes into the courtroom and then the hearing starts. And then I ask certain things uh, to my client as well as maybe to the other side. So this is how it works. Hope that answer your questions. Um, so yes, again, thank you. Again, um, you do not need any work experience to uh, become a member of any means. Right, so just one more question. So right after completing the LLP degree and enrolling into, you know, after or during the time of an LLP degree to qualify as a barrister, what is the time duration? Is it 12 months? Well, uh, uh, so what they say, your degree becomes stale within five years, okay? That means once you finish your LLB degree, you have to apply immediately for your bar training because otherwise your chances of getting chance become uh, you know, uh, less and less. So I recommend within two years, you apply for your BTC training and you have to show the uh, provider that you are engaged with your uh, 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 legal education or legal experience means even in a high street law firm, you can just work there voluntarily. There are lots of organizations uh, looking for volunteers to help them with day-to-day -day legal work. So you can get some experience from those. Like there is an institute in London called FRU, Free Representation Unit. Their charity organization giving advice to the member of the public for free. And there is other organization called Law Center. So less law centers are based uh, in many parts of the United Kingdom. So you can contact them for legal experience that look, dear sir, madam, I want to gain some legal experience and I want to work as a volunteer. Also, citizen advice bureau. So yeah. I don't know if you live in London, there is a citizen advice board where you can speak to them. Look, I want to be a volunteer. So you get some experience from citizen advice board or law center or free representation unit, as well as you can contact the chambers. Look, I'm a student of law degree. I want to have my mini privilege. Would you please kindly allow me to join? Okay, it might be anyway, very difficult to get the chance in the chambers because they have to pay you as well as certain chambers, they pay you for becoming a mini PPH. They pay you for five for 500 pounds uh, for three days or maybe for five days, just attending and working with them. And they give you sometimes, you know, uh, they treat you, maybe your uh, people master will provide you food, the dinner, dining, you sit with him and discuss the uh, legal environment how is it uh, becoming a barrister? Whether yeah, there are, uh, you know, uh, hurdles uh, during your education or training or uh, experience. So hope that Zainab answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. And good luck with your studies. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Any other questions, please, audience? <clears throat> Uh, one more question regarding uh, debt uh, becoming a barrister in the uh, England and Wales. Uh, whether you said that there are uh, there are four inns, so you sh we can become a member of uh, one of those inns. So my question is whether first you you need to become a uh, become a member of that inn, then you have to apply for the uh, barrister, or how it will be work. Okay. Okay. So, so question. question. Now, to become a member, you can become a member anytime. Yes? But I would recommend you become a member before you apply for your BTC training. The reason is that the BTC provider will uh, ask you whether you are a member of any means. Uh, when you enroll for the course, they will definitely ask you whether you are a member of one of the four inns. The reason is that they want to see where, whether you are engaged with your inn. You don't only uh, study BTC with your provider, you also attend 12 qualifying sessions. I mentioned in earlier talk, there are 12 dinner you have to complete uh, during your course and you have to pay for each dinner to the inn. So uh, if you're studying law degree, it is the best time to apply to become a member of uh, one of the four inns. The reason is that once you become the member of the four inns, you will have access to your inn. You can attend, you can uh, use their library. You may have voting rights, yes. And finally, you can go and you can attend the dinner, even not all the dinners dining are qualifying dining or compulsory dining. There are lots of additional dining. We call them in different names like black tie dinner, weekend dinner, you know. So you also participate in mooting competition, uh, debate competition. There are various legal issues. You can attend talk uh, given by the uh, senior judges, like high court judges. Uh, and also sometimes you can see the member of uh, House of Lords. You can see lots of celebrities like royal family members. And you can see the uh, 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 benches, senior judges, senior lawyers. So you can exchange your view with them. And then you can learn a lot from them. Okay, thank you very much. And one more question that whether these all dining and other programs will be held in London or any other uh, counties? No, all no, of the all of in, they're based in London only. Okay. So Lincoln's Inn is in Chancery Lane, and the Gray's Inn very walking distance from Lincoln's Inn uh, around central London. So all of the four inns, Middle Temple and uh, Inner Temple. The all four in based in London. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, Saka. There is another question. The question was already answered, but she joined late. Let me read that question for you if you can answer, taking your time, please. Yes, sure. uh, I have LLB degree in Sri Lanka and I'm a lawyer in Sri Lanka, but I don't have even one year experience. So what would be the procedure to become a solicitor in UK? Okay. So if she is a qualified lawyer in Sri Lanka, okay, this is a good question because I did not mention it earlier. You must have three years experience practice in Sri Lanka. Otherwise, you have to go through the similar procedure. You have to have a qualifying law degree from England, or you can send your certificate to SRA. Solicitor Regulation Authority in the UK. They will assess your certificate and your uh, qualification. And they can say that, well, you are exempt from certain course or you have to sit for the SQE1 or SQE2. 
So I hope that answered the questions. And otherwise, you must, if you just want to uh, res register as a foreign lawyer, then you have to uh, be uh, uh, in practice for at least three years. But Shahana, are you okay with it? Or if you have any further question, you can uh, come to the mic. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Shahana. So, uh, any other questions or shall we wrap up? Okay, is there any questions? You have uh, one more minute to ask any uh, possible questions. You can come to the mic, anyone more than welcome to come to the mic and ask yeah, your there, question directly. There, yes, one minute. Questions. Have any questions? Rangani, you keep you on the mic. Did you want to speak? <clears throat> right. So, uh, thank you very much for Mr. Sarkar taking your okay, time. Okay, one more thing before we wrap up. I have uh, uh, something to discuss. Okay, now, apart from become as, becoming a solicitor or barrister, you have other rules to qualify as a lawyer in England. Okay, but you may not have every rights to exercise. Like you can become a, a legal executive. This is called uh, Institute of Chartered uh, Certified uh, Legal Executive. Okay, so it's called uh, Silex or Ilex. Yes, so you can become a member of Silex and then become a legal uh, executive. So you have certain rights to practice as a lawyer, or you can become, uh, if you practice immigration, you can become a OISC register, Office of Immigration Service Commissioner. So there are various ways. You can be a legal uh, advisor uh, in relation to technology science. So this is, uh, or patent. So this is different groups. So uh, I just briefly mentioned, say so if you have any questions in relation to these rules, you can ask me. Thank you. Right. Uh, so there's a there's a question that she needs the contact number. Admin, can you please share the contact number on the chat box, please, the UK number. Right. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, everyone and Mrs. Saga, especially for taking your time on a weekend, your family day, all the way down from the UK to give this valuable message to our audience from Sri Lanka and some other part of the world. And audience, thank you very much for your time, uh, for your your NDVs that you're taking further to become lawyers and solicitors or barristers in the UK. And we wish you all the best in advance. And I see you all in a different uh, topic on a, another Sunday. In BT Talk. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks all. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet all of you, especially Mr. Ahmed. Uh, 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 I miss you a lot and hope to see you soon. <laughs> I see you in January. <laughs> all right. You take care.